Welcome to another special edition of Daily Airline News, focusing on the search for MH370. I'm Geoffrey Thomas, and once again, delighted to say, joined by UK Aerospace Engineer Richard Godfrey, who has taken Whisper technology, perfected it as a tracking tool to locate aircraft and thus a new location for MH370. Welcome, Richard. Yeah, good afternoon to you, Geoffrey. Thank you. Uh, and first and foremost, can you give us an update on Amada 7806? Because we have some new news. Yeah, Amada 7806 is still in the second uh, survey area, but it has now updated its destination to be confirmed. It was previously Cape Town, and now it's uh, left open to be confirmed. In my view, this will be updated again uh, to say Fremantle, Australia, but we will see what uh, transpires. The Amada 7806 survey pattern continues to progress to the northeast and now definitely covers the Captain Patrick Blelly and Jean Luc Marchand hotspot uh, between their minimum ditching point and their maximum ditching point. And we're showing you that uh, on, on the screen. Meanwhile, Amada 8601 has left Singapore and is bound for Cape Town, where it is expected to arrive in 24 days' time on the 16th of April. Yeah, well, that, we'll see where that goes. It, they seem to go to different places other yeah. than what they say they're going to do, but uh, we'll, we'll keep monitoring that. But, Richard, we're going to focus on a really fascinating subject, um, barnacles. Um, barnacles, so, yeah. Yeah, barnacles. So what investigations have there been done into the barnacles found on MH3 floating debris? Because they tell lots of secrets, do they not? They do reveal uh, a lot of secrets. So there have been quite a number of studies uh, done. Um, for example, a study uh, published uh, with the title A Stable Isotope Scalochronology, I can't even say it, um, based forensic method for reconstructing debris drift paths with application to the MH370 crash a very long title, and a very long list of authors, uh, Nasser Al-Khatan, Gregory Herbert, Howard Sparrow, Sean McCarthy, Ryan McKeady, uh, Ran Tao, and Marie Power. Um, these people have produced a, a, a fabulous uh, study which uh, uh, gives us a lot of clues about uh, uh, the uh, barnacles. Um, Dr. Joseph Poupin, a marine biologist and expert on crustaceans, took samples of the barnacles um, found uh, on the flaperon. He took barnacles from five different um, areas on the flaperon on 9th of uh, August 2015 and just 11 days after the flaperon was uh, reported. A Professor Patrick de Decker of the Australian National University analysed one of these bar barnacles uh, from the Flapron uh, in depth with uh, laser technology. Um, another guy called uh, Bupendra Patel, um, and we're including the links to these various research reports uh, below, mm -hmm. uh, did an investigation into the effect of sea temperature on the growth of uh, barnacles and um, and there are several more studies but uh, yeah a lot of work has been done analyzing barnacles probably probably some good reading for somebody suffering from insomnia uh, um, yeah <laughs> what but what does the first study conclude about the barnacles found on mh370 floating debris well, unfortunately, uh, the study is not conclusive, but uh, nevertheless gives us a number of hints. 
Um, I'm not a marine biologist or oceanographer. Uh, as a physicist, I can only make uh, general observations. Uh, but the authors state in their study, a se severe limitation of this approach is that individual sea surface temperatures do not have unique spatial solutions, especially on the scale of ocean basins over time. Um, it's a complicated way of saying uh, we can't be precise about what uh, sea temperature uh, a barnacle may have traveled through um, when it's uh, attached to a flapper on going from the crash location of MH370 all the way across to the uh, island of uh, Reunion. And um, I'm also mindful of uh, oceanographers Rosemary Morrow and Pierre-Yves Letrain. Uh, the ocean, like the atmosphere, is a fundamentally turbulent system. But having said that, uh, the study does uh, not give a crash location but it does present a method for determining the MH370 uh, crash location. Uh, the study focuses on just the one item of debris, the flapperon. Uh, there are 43 other items, and many have been reported uh, with barnacles uh, attached. In this study, the range of duration between the 8th of March 2014 and the time of reporting the various fines um, is about uh, 508 uh, days for the flapperon and on out to 1,626 days for the uh, last item uh, to be uh, uh, found and handed in. And the study focuses on just one specimen, um, A2-G1, uh, hyphen from the flapperon, and has an estimated age of 154 days. So this only covers 30% of the 508 days uh, the flapperon uh, drifted. And oceanographers like David Griffin or Charita Patiarachi um, say the study ignores the Stokes drift and the windage and um, and the really uh, questionable uh, utility uh, of being able to be precise about the crash location of MH370. So in, in general, um, yeah, very useful study, but not conclusive. So what about the other studies? What do they uh, show up, uh, Richard? Well... Uh, they sh they really uh, confirm that barnacles are a great help uh, to work out the uh, arrival time of a of a debris item, and uh, there are four items uh, floating debris from MH370 that have been found with uh, barnacles. Um, there were many uh, attached to the the flapperon, and uh, there were also. Um, uh, uh, many attached to others like Roy, um, which was found in, in South Africa. Mm. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot we can uh, learn from these other st studies. Uh, uh, barnacles that have been out of the water for 11 days uh, lose their ability to uh, the, generate the adhesive chemical that uh, helps them to attach to their host. Um, and so they started to peel off the flapperon when it was uh, shipped to France. So they took them, they took all the barnacles off, and they collected 468.3 grams of, of barnacles. Uh, they were all the species uh, Lepus anatifera. Um, so other studies, like from uh, Buprenda Patel, say. Barnacles only reproduce and grow when the sea temperature is between 19 uh, degrees centigrade and 25 degrees centigrade. And the warmer it gets, the, the faster they uh, reproduce. And Patrick de Decker, um, with his laser technology uh, drilled into the, uh, the shell 
uh, of a barnacle that he was given and he was looking to find the ratio of magnesium to calcium uh, in the shell which gives clues about the temperature of the water the barnacles are going through and with the different temperatures he tried to construct the path that a barnacle might have taken uh, to reach uh, Réunion. He points out that's not uh, a conclusive and precise uh, methodology but it, all of these uh, studies give us uh, different clues. They sure do and of course that underscores you know the issue with Malaysia not collecting various pieces of debris that have been handed in and you know the, there's, there's the devils in the detail with some of these things isn't it? It is indeed. So one thing to actually collect and analyze the debris items and look at the the damage that that debris item um, in, uh, incurred in the crash that tells us something but another thing completely uh, to look at any marine life that m was found uh, and uh, the clues uh, that uh, that uh, gives us so uh, yeah so, so how can we be sure how long MH3 debris has been in the water th and through which waters did the debris travel? Well, there was a very interesting study done um, on a structure for an oil rig that was towed uh, from Japan to New Zealand. Um, it was built in Japan and was going to operate in New Zealand. So it was towed on its side right through uh, the oceans and um, through different uh, waters, but mostly through tropical waters. And they studied the barnacles that this um, rig uh, attracted. And they worked out there are an average of 248 lepers, so the barnacles, per square meter. And they had an average weight of 0.29 grams each. Um, barnacles were found on the submerged parts, but also on the parts that were below the so-called splash line uh, mm. when waves crashed against the, the oil rig. So this co covered, when you couple it with David Griffin's study, where he took an authentic uh, flapper on, and cut it down to the size of the damaged flaperon from MH370. And he found that the flaperon was pitching over every few minutes in the sea. It wasn't just floating along in a stable fashion. It would flip on its tail and then flip on its top mm. and then again on its tail. So there was sufficient time under the water for the flaperons to feed and, and survive. Now, the flaperon has a total surface area of almost eight square meters. And at 248 lepers uh, per square meter, you would expect to find a colony of almost 2,000 barnacles uh, upon arrival. And the total weight of the barnacles uh, found by uh, the DGA in France, as I said, was 468 grams. And if the average weight is 0.29, then that comes to about 1,600 barnacles. Um, so you can see these two estimates uh, line up. And Dr. Pupin um, then analyzed and came to the conclusion that uh, the flaperon had been in the water for 476 days. Mm. And we found the flaperon after 508. So... Uh, it's pretty good alignment uh, on that score. Absolutely. So is 476 days for the flap run accurate or is it just approximate? It's an approximate uh, estimate. So 476 days plus or minus, say, 30 days, and then you come to 508. So, um, mm. you know, it's, it's not that far um, out. Um, Dr. Pupin noted it took... Uh, four days for the barnacles to, to die when they were out of the water. It took them 11 days to start detaching from their host. 
Um, we know, for example, when the debris item Roy, the Rolls-Royce nameplate from the engine, uh, was found in South Africa, it was actually found twice. Mm. Um, once it was full of barnacles, and then it was found uh, several weeks later, um, and it was completely clean of, of mm. barnacles. The first time it was found, it um, it literally stunk to, to high heaven. So the guy just uh, threw it back in the sea, basically. But he did take a picture, um, mm. gratefully. When yeah. the second time it it was uh, almost clean. So um, it doesn't take long when a item is out on a beach uh, for the wind, the waves, the, the sun scorching on it, um, for scavengers to come pick it clean. Uh, so it doesn't take long to get from a barnacle full to a barnacle clean um, item of debris. Indeed. Now, just for the viewers, remind the viewers, and I hope I'm right in saying this, that flapperon was found virtually at the, at the time it arrived at Reunion Island. Was that correct? Yeah. It, the cle beach cleaners clean every day. Yeah. And, and so uh, they go along the same stretch of beach um, every day. Uh, they do take Sunday off, uh, but uh, apart from that, every day. So the flapperon could have been there for maximum uh, 24 hours. Yeah. Um, and uh, so we have a very precise uh, time. And the the flapron is uh, the first item to be found. So it, uh, others have been found for, for many uh, months thereafter. But the first one is uh, pretty good at gauging the, the time and the distance it traveled from the seventh arc uh, yeah. and gives us a, a lot of information. And the French have got the flapperon and all of the uh, uh, barnacles um, that they've taken off it, uh, you know, we guess around 1,600. And quite frankly, I think they should spare a few of the older barnacles for researchers like... Uh, uh, Nasser al Khatan from the University of Kuwait and Gregory Herbert from the University of South Florida. Uh, and then perhaps we get an even more accurate answer about uh, uh, MH370 debris from uh, um, their, their continued studies. Mm. Absolutely fascinating. It's, it's extraordinary the science that's been brought to bear on this uh, search for MH370. I mean, Almost every discipline of science is, uh, is involved in this uh, amazing jigsaw puzzle. That, um, so, Richard, um, thank you very much indeed for this uh, research that you've done. It's, it's fantastic. Oh, you're very, very welcome. And it's, it's a great joy to observe all of these different scientific fields, oceanographers, marine biologists, the physicists, the satellite communication experts, there are aerospace engineers, the uh, untold number of different uh, scientific fields, uh, underwater acoustics. Um, and it's, uh, it's an incredible case study uh, for oh, yeah. science, uh, MH370. Is indeed. So, viewers, thank you very much indeed for watching today. Tomorrow we're going to uh, give you an update on where Amada 7806 is and also answer your questions. So we'll be looking through them to pick some of the better ones. Um, and uh, thank you um, for watching. Thank you for uh, subscribing to us. Thank you for the likes and thank you for the questions. We really do appreciate it. And once again, Richard, thank you for your time. Really do appreciate it. You're welcome.